This video is sponsored by Dicey Dungeon. If you've ever played a campaign that started at level one, you probably fought one of the following. Big scary rats, giant insects, kobolds, or goblins. Easy stuff. None of these things has more than like 12 hit points on a good day. But what if I told you that some of these monsters are capable of overcoming their weaknesses? The first two I threw in because they've happened to me personally, but the other two are actually what this little series is about. I had a rat roll like six 20s in a row and knock a level three member unconscious. And big bugs are just scary. Even at level 20, I shit my pants when I see spiders. The big spiders. But aside from that, I'm gonna try and make a case that shows you how dangerous goblins and kobolds are. Let's start with goblins because people actually know these guys. If you remember the RuneScape jam that is Goblin Village, those weird green flying things from Spooderman, scrawny dudes from Lord of the Rings, and a thousand other sources. In D&D, goblins are the scrawny foot fungus of a race called goblinoids. I'm not going to focus every goblinoid because this video is about the default Shrek colored gnomes. Aside from those, there are bugbears, which look more like Wolverine's brother than goblins, and hobgoblins. They are not to be fucked with. Here's just a small number of things you need to know about goblins before we get started. First, they have this god called Maglubiet, who slaughtered all their other gods and now runs their afterlife. When a goblin dies in battle, they serve this god in a way that's not too far from being damned to hell. As a result, dying is at the very bottom of their agenda. Second, they're incredibly adept miners and crafters, some things they have in common with kobolds. This means they build traps. Third, they're slavers. Uh, yeah. They're at the bottom of the world, so heckling and commanding captives makes them feel better about themselves. Lastly, they are master animal trainers. With that in mind, let's pull up this beautiful two for the price of one battle mat provided by Dicey Dungeons for the odd price of $28.97. Fully equipped with three markers to stain the battle mats after you forget to clean them and a magnetic eraser that you'll never use. What the hell just happened? Where'd I go? Okay, I'm gonna use this floppy mat thing to run through an encounter your party might face when dealing with goblins. I'll even go with bare bones goblins. So one boss inside and let's say 2d12 plus five goblins total. This will be for the full camp. I rolled a 16. I'll throw in four additional goblin children that can't actually fight and put them at the back of the lair for realism's sake. So here we have the choke point in the outskirts of the lair. This is the designated and fully equipped area for goblins to capture and collect new friends. About 120 feet up the road, a distance off the road itself, one quiet goblin waits buried under a pile of mulch that grants him advantage on stealth. With a normal average of 15.5 with their natural bonus, he's pretty snug and can somewhat easily be undetected by your average 5th to 6th level ranger. His job is to watch for intruders and then immediately alert the ambush group ahead. The moment the party passes him, he's stealthily dashing to the choke point to prepare. Let's look at the layout. This ambush group has a total of six goblins from the goblin village down the road. Four of them are hiding up in the trees, covered with leaves and wielding short bows. One thing to keep in mind is goblins aren't entirely stupid. They will always use everything they can think of to secure a victory. Goblins in Cholt, for example, form little totem poles and have ant farms to protect their villages. My goblins will do some gross shit. When a goblin in this particular tribe dies, they shove arrowheads down its throat and let the body sit in a pond for three days. They then uncover the arrowheads, bury the body, and make arrows out of these horrendously poisoned tips. Aside from those in the trees, we have the goblin up the road run into these bushes and replace the current resident. That goblin then goes to the lair to inform the rest. The last goblin is hiding behind a small ledge and has three wolves borrowed from their lair. We have our combatants, our poisons, and our pets, but here are the traps. Firstly, a hidden snare trap with a manual activation that is held by the first goblin. Second, a net trap only a few feet up the road with another manual activation. Just beyond, we have two pit traps dug 10 feet down with a few rats at the base. Off the road and up the ledge, we have three boulders primed and ready to ride down and straight into the party. Over here we have a few defensive spikes hidden in this bush. It sounds crazy, but this is more or less what goblin trial and error hunting results in. Not to say this isn't the only trapped area. The entire terrain around a goblin camp is trapped and left unattended, to be checked by gatherers daily. 
It took me a while to figure out how tough this encounter is, because challenge rating is about as accurate as a blind man trying to piss in a thimble 20 feet away. I found that this little handful of goblins can at the bare minimum take down this level of three adventurers. One is a fifth level ranger, one is a fifth level rogue, and a fourth level cleric. As the party passes through the area, nothing happens. The goblins will analyze who looks the weakest, planning their tactics accordingly. Once the weakest enemy crosses over this first trap, or when the leader party slips into the first pit, shit goes down. In this way, the surprise round triggers. An order is shouted by the goblin hidden in the bushes, and these two traps are triggered. The goblin in the bushes and the furthest away in the trees both fire their arrows at the rogue. The goblin up here releases two wolves and then mounts a third. Then everyone plays hide and seek using nimble escape. This should already be a shit show for the party, with traps firing off, random orders shouted, wolves howling, and almost no visible enemies. Using the power of statistical probability, no one but the rogue saw the goblin in the far tree, and they all heard the bushwhacker. The cleric gets caught in the snare, the ranger fell into the pit trap, and the rogue avoided his net. However, he took some damage from the previously unseen sources and became poisoned. Round two. Or should I say, the surprise round is over. Do you get why I'm trying to make this video right now? The rogue goes first and has a dilemma. Two allies are trapped, wolves are coming, and they're all under fire. A rogue's natural intuition is likely to hide, shoot the enemy they saw, and hope for the best. This goblin dies instantly. The wolves will then venture forward guided by this mounted goblin. They'll run up to the snared cleric and prepare to bite next round. All the cleric can do right now is break free of the trap and find themselves currently outnumbered. The goblins will then take their turns, two having clear sights on the unknowing rogue. They both fire, impaling the rogue pretty deeply, and then hide again. The bush goblin will fire at the cleric before running further down the road, hoping to use more traps and avoid the rogue. The wolf rider will shove one of these boulders down, which rolls, as planned, straight into the pit. The ranger takes a hefty smack in the head and ends up trapped by a massive rock, accompanied by three hungry rats. On this ranger's turn, the only thing they think to do is con the rats with a tasty morsel and hope for the best. Round three. All that went down in 12 seconds so far. The rogue, now somewhat of a toxic pincushion, weakly fires another arrow at a wolf and searches the trees, spotting one more goblin. He then moves further around the rock to take cover. The three wolves, with glorious pack tactics, deliver some painful bites but fail to knock this cleric prone. The cleric then takes out the wolf that the goblin is riding and heals a bit. The previously mounted goblin values life above all things, so he gets the hell out of there and takes his main action to hide. The two that remained further up the road close in a bit, one downing the cleric with a final arrow and the other climbing up the tree to spy on the remaining and injured rogue. Now outnumbered, Still poisoned, and near death, the rogue surrenders in hopes of later escape. After tying up the two above ground and dancing in celebration, the goblins take their captives home. They return later with more numbers, move the rock, and collect the likely very hungry ranger. Less than half of a small goblin tribe and three normal wolves annihilated three seasoned heroes in 18 seconds, with traps and numbers to spare. Really, the simple lesson here is when you give a monster a battle plan and one or two allies, their danger level skyrockets. Honestly, same goes for characters. I took out an Ankeg with a handheld mirror and some cantrips at level one. A goblin layer is going to be even more difficult and surprisingly more trapped. We won't need a round to round analysis here, so let's just look at some cause and effect. Their favorite locations are caves and mines, full of choke points and small tunnels that they can excavate. Another difference here is if you've made it inside, you might be too dangerous to enslave. In other words, no holds barred. Just outside the cave are goblins at work on farms, crafting, or other jobs. A tiny key here that kind of destroys my entire argument is if a working goblin is caught and even lightly interrogated, he'll explain every detail and every trap inside. But goblins will definitely try to run. So dungeon masters, I suggest you play goblin keep away. The first chamber of this cave and the main entry houses semi-free wolves who naturally defend their own territory. The difficulty here multiplies depending on numbers with pack tactics being a dangerous boon. 
Beyond the main chamber are tiny tunnels normal creatures can't fit through, and a few natural passages. Every single passage, goblin-sized or not, is trapped. If the party isn't both careful and lucky in spades, the tunnels will collapse on any intruder with a very thin chance of escape and a high chance of required claustrophobia therapy. Smaller chambers hold various supplies or arms, and large chambers hold slaves or defensive pets. While traversing these chambers, goblins will use their tiny networks of tunnels to shoot you from the front, then the back, then vanish with their goddamn nimble escape. They aren't strong, they aren't outright deadly, but a goblin camp will wear you down, arrow by arrow, trap by trap, till you wake up in a cage, wondering why you underestimated the little green men. Then you karate chop the cage open and use some booyag to assert your authority and just walk out the front door. They really suck at building cages. Did you draw penises? Oh, fuck. It's unerasable, Logan. Get it! Oh, I got some. Get the penis off. Get the, get it, the, get the, get, get. you two can't have penises on them. There's no more penis. Buy the product. <laughs>